So when the international break is upon us and that means as of a Thursday the CONCACAF Nations League will resume for two more exciting rounds of action. Now, a team that has embodied the excitement in their opening two games in the Nations League is St. Lucia who handily beat St. Martin by five goals to one in their opening game before cruising past St. Kitts and Nevis 2-0 in their second. Now this has led to the St. Lucia team being top of the Group A standings in Nations League B and sets up two mouth-watering clashes versus Guadeloupe and uh, uh, who also won both of their opening games. The first of these top of the table clashes will take place at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground on Thursday. And we were scheduled at this point to talk to the St. Lucia captain, Kurt Frederick, but we're having some difficulties linking with him, a player who has had a lot of experience in Caribbean football. He has played a semi-pro football in Antigua. He has played also in Trinidad and Tobago. And he did have a stint in Costa Rica as well. 32 years old now, um, Kurt Frederick and uh, he is uh, presiding over a St. Lucia team that is doing very well at the moment. Undefeated so far in their Nations League campaign, Mariah, and um, I think Guadeloupe will present a tough challenge for them, but it's good to see St. Lucia's football rebounding in the way that it has in the past few months. Yes, really happy to see St. Lucia at the top of the table uh, on the point standings, and as you said, Lance, I have to agree, Guadeloupe will pose a challenge, and I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. They have also, just like St. Lucia, won two out of their two matches, and they have a total of six points, just like St. Lucia. However, I have to say, I've been really, really impressed with this quality of football that I've seen from the St. Lucia team. And I'm saying that because it appears as if these players are extremely hungry. And we have to remember Lance, for some time, they didn't play football, and they were away from the field. So I think it's a sigh of relief that they're back on doing exactly what they love. They also are under the guidance of head coach Stin John, a fellow Trini. And I think the chemistry and what coach has been able to impart within that dressing room and that setup is very, very evident on the football field. So I think that must also be commended. And recently, we know the president of St. Lucia FA, Lyndon Cooper, doesn't really say much to the media, but I was reading an article online where you know he is assuring the players that he's doing all under his purview to support the teams. He went on to say that the ultimate goal of his organization is for them to one day play in the FIFA World Cup, which is a dream of any team and any country. So I think based on what we've been seeing looking on from the outside, things have really been clicking off the field and on the field for St. Lucia football. And I think when those two things work hand in hand and marry itself, you always get good quality football. It's no secret that St. Lucia has good footballers. I think the support and the good coaching that they deserved, they didn't get it in the past. So I'm happy, really happy to see them on the top of the table. I do know against Guadeloupe, tomorrow will be tough, but they're playing at Homelands, yes, right? Yes, at the Darren Sammy Stadium. So maybe this is the platform where we urge the St. Lucians to come out, of course, and support their mm -hmm. team, because I think the fans will have a massive part to play. They can be the 12th man. Yeah, and we have to remember that a few years ago, we did put St. Lucia's football under the microscope when we were discussing the Football Association's decision not to enter St. Lucia in World Cup qualifying, which was a contentious issue. And uh, there were players that had demonstrated with placards outside the uh, St. Lucia Football Association offices. And um, it's good to see that the, the country's game has rebounded from that position. And uh, they did go into Gold Cup qualifying earlier on. They were beaten by Martinique earlier this year, so they didn't quite make it to the Gold Cup. But one of their victories in the Nations League in the past month did come against St. Kitts and Nevis, yes. who were in the Gold Cup, and they beat them 2-0. And St. Kitts and Nevis are ranked like about 30 places above them on the FIFA World Rankings list at the moment. So that result, defeating St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, which we are seeing here, was a very, very, or would have been a very, very satis satisfying result for the St. Lucians. A team that I've always had a lot of time for, even in the years of Caribbean Cup football. They weren't consistently among the top flight, but there were years that they were very good. 
St. Lucia. And uh, I remember players like Erjan and Titus Elva, who were a potent strike force for St. Lucia and were very, very difficult to stop, no matter who they were playing. They could have been playing the top flight teams in the Caribbean at the time, Cuba, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, um, Martinique, but they were always a threat, um, Titus Elva and Earl Jean. And uh, when I think back on those St. Lucia years, I am, I'm happy to see that their game is lifting again. They played CONCACAF Nations League C last season. They're in Nations League B now, and based on their current form, I'm pretty certain that coach Stern, John, who has a rich history with Trinidad and Tobago's football, would be eyeing League A in the next campaign. Yeah, and as you say, as you say that, I reached out to him earlier today, Stern, John, because on one of the things that I need to do is to speak to him about, you know, how it has been in St. Lucia, some of the things that he would have implemented, some of the things that he has had to deal with over there. I'd like to have that sit-down conversation with Stone to find out about the players because there's one in particular who scored a hat-trick. I wrote his name down, Dominic Polion. Yes. You know, top-class footballer and, of course, a lot of confidence. So for me, I feel like it's our duty, based on what we do, to get to know a bit more about this St. Lucia football because I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of them lately. Yeah, so lots of Nations League football coming up over the weekend. As I said, St. Lucia and St. Vincent of the Grenadines currently top of their groups in League B. In League A, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago top of their groups uh, in League A, as we said. So um, some of the CARICOM nations doing well in the CONCACAF Nations League at the moment. We go to break. Uh, we'll be back with more on the Sports Night Zone after this.